Welcome, welcome, welcome. We are talking about polysaccharides. Now this video follows on from the one we made on monosaccharides and disaccharides. Polysaccharide is a carbohydrate which is made from many repeating units of a monosaccharide, typically glucose. At AS Biology for OCR you need to know about four polysaccharides in detail. And those polysaccharides are amylose, amylopectin, glycogen and cellulose. All of these are polymers of glucose. Amylose, myelopectin and glycogen are polymers of alpha glucose whereas cellulose is a polymer of beta glucose. Briefly let's remind ourselves of how you join glucose molecules together. You join them together with a glycosidic bond and in this case our glycosidic bond is going to be an alpha 1 to 4 glycosidic bond because if we number off our carbons in these glucoses 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 we have made our glycosidic bond between carbon 1 and carbon 4 of these two glucose molecules and they're both alpha glucose molecules so it is an alpha 1, 2, 4 glycosidic linkage fine formed by a condensation reaction so called because it releases H2O remembering of course that the opposite to a condensation is a hydrolysis reaction which requires H2O to go into it to break this glycosidic bond here fine that's how we join them together and we thought about this question last time let's not worry about it now we've dealt with that fine let's move on amylose this is the first one we're going to be thinking about because it's the simplest really and amylose is just a long polymer of alpha glucose joined together by alpha 1 to 4 glycosidic linkages or bonds let's call them glycosidic bonds so in essence it's a long chain of alpha glucose end on end repeating for maybe up to 500 thousand glucose units it's very large when you get all these alpha glucoses together end on end like this the molecule forms a superstructure and in this case it is formed because we have OH's here and OH's here and you can get hydrogen bonds forming between them so you get hydrogen bonds forming between alpha glucose residues on the amylose molecules. That pulls them closer together and causes amylose to form up into this helix like this with the loops of the helix joined together by hydrogen bonds. There we go, hydrogen bonds hold amylose together in loops generating a helix. That's amylose. Amylose is one of the components of starch and it has one reducing end. This is going to be where our reducing carbon is on this glucose over here and because you've got one reducing carbon in the whole of 500,000 glucose polysaccharide you're not going to get a positive Benedict's test off this. The other significance of it having only one end to it is that you can only break it down from one end. If you're using amylase that will break it down from an end and it will take two bit bites out of it but it'll only work from one end and so if you're trying to break down a 500,000 glucose molecule polymer and you've just got one end to do it from one bite at a time it's going to take you an awfully long time. This helix that amylose has helps it to be a nice compact storage molecule. There's another effect as well which is that the hydrophilic bits tend to be wrapped up on the inside of these loops and the hydrophobic bits more on the outside insofar as there are any real hydrophobic bits on glucose. That means that amylose is largely insoluble. Yes we can kind of mush some starch up with some water and call it a starch solution but pretty much it's insoluble. This furthermore means that it has no osmotic effect. It doesn't lower the water potential of a solution that it's in. This is very important 
for its function as a storage molecule because you do not want your storage molecule changing the water potential of your cells and causing lots of water to enter them. So amylose, compact molecule in a helix, insoluble, osmotically neutral. Good news for amylose. Now we're going to look at a mylopectin. A mylopectin is the other component of starch. It is also a polymer of alpha glucose and we have plenty of alpha 1 to 4 glycosidic bonds. There's one there, there's another one there, there's another one there. However, a mylopectin also has an alpha 1 to 6 glycosidic linkage. Alpha 1 to 6 glycosidic bond or linkage. This means that you can get branches coming off it. Let's have a look at how that affects its superstructure. It means we get many ends for hydrolysis to occur. So we can digest it down faster if we want to release the glucose for respiration or maybe just simply for digestion. This also gives it a more compact structure for efficient storage. And mylopectin, just as with amylose, is an insoluble molecule and will be osmotically neutral. Our third polymer that we're going to consider is glycogen. Glycogen has the same structure as a mylopectin. That is, it is mainly formed of alpha glucose molecules joined together with alpha 1 to 4s, but also has a few alpha 1 to 6s. It has the same structure as a mylopectin, but the branches are more frequent. Why is this? Well, let's think about that. Amylose and a mylopectin are both plant polysaccharides. Glycogen is an animal polysaccharide. And yes, we can find fungi and prokaryotes, which have got glycogen as well. But let's consider it from the point of view of an animal. Why does an animal need more branches in its storage carbohydrate than a plant? Well, animals are more metabolically active than plants. Therefore, they need to be able to release their glucose faster than plants. And as a consequence, it benefits them greatly to have their storage carbohydrate with more ends to it so that we can get at that glucose a little bit quicker because we're animals we just got to do things quickly we don't want to hang around whereas plants you know plants just they live at their own pace plants look at animals and they think you're crazy why why are you just running around just just slow down take life at our pace you know, we get along, we grow, we photosynthesize, we poison things that eat us. We do all sorts of stuff like that. And we just do it nice and slowly. Animals racing around, racing around. Lots of energy being used metabolically. And so they need a lot of ends to their storage carbohydrates. Finally, let's get on to our last polysaccharide. And we're going to think about cellulose. Cellulose differs from amylose, from amylopectin, from glycogen in that it uses beta glucose rather than alpha. If you recall, beta glucose has the OH on the carbon 1 and the OH on the carbon 4 pointing in opposite directions, whereas in alpha glucose, the OH on carbon 1 points down, on beta glucose, it points up as shown in this diagram here. This has a very significant effect when it comes to joining beta glucose molecules together because it ends up flipping them over each time. So have a look what happens to our 1 to 4 glycosidic linkages. This one popping up, this one popping down, popping up, popping down, meaning that our sixth carbon here is popping up, popping down, popping up, popping down, just like that. Well, so what, you might say. Well, number one, cellulose ends up forming straight chains. Very significant. Not like these helices you get from an amylose. These are straight chains. They're different. Number two, beta 1 to 4 linkages are indigestible by animals. Animals cannot produce cellulase. We are unable to do that, and all animals lack the ability to make cellulase. Now, that 
results in various things. Number one, if you are a slug or a caterpillar, you can munch away at cells and all you can do at plant cells is to break open their cell walls and digest the contents. The cell walls themselves can do nothing for you. That is why caterpillars eat so voraciously and get through so many leaves because they just can't do anything with the cell walls. The other strategy you can have is to co-opt a microorganism to make your cellulase for you. So if you take a cow for example, I don't often take cows, I eat cows, they're very nice. Um, but let's, I digress, if you take a cow it has in its gut bacteria which can produce cellulase and digest it down. So a cow, while we may think we're farming the cow, the cow itself is farming bacteria. The bacteria do its work for it, it will digest some of the bacteria, it will digest bacterial protein, it will digest the glucose made from the cellulose. Other strategies include that of the leafcutter ants. Leafcutter ants, they also act as farmers. They go out and they forage for bits of leaf or petals or whatever it might be and they take that back to their nest and at that nest they feed it to a fungus. The fungus produces the cellulase, digests it down and then that fungus is used as a food source by the ants themselves. Not all of the ants but uh, certainly some members of the colony. The other consequence of these beta 1 to 4 glycosidic bonds and the flipping of the sixth carbon is that now, if you line these up opposite each other, you get opportunity for hydrogen bonds to form between the OH group on this sixth carbon and the OH group on another sixth carbon on a cellulose chain running parallel to it. And so you get cellulose molecules, so each individual chain is a molecule, which then bind together with hydrogen bonds between them, giving you a crystalline array overall and forming this thing here called a microfibril, this macro structure here, which is a microfibril. This structurally is very strong, particularly in tension, and so therefore it's very good as a structural carbohydrate. In particular, because it's strong in tension, it's good at resisting turgor pressure as the cell ex tries to expand as it takes on water by osmosis. There are of course other polysaccharides in the cell wall, in particular one called pectin, but we don't need to worry about that for OCR biology. This is a summary of the key points for cellulose. It has beta 1 to 4 glycosidic bonds. The sixth carbon is inverted on each occasion and it is indigestible by amylase. Because it has beta 1 to 4 glycosidic bonds, they will not fit into the active site of amylase. The active site of amylase is specific for alpha 1 to 4 glycosidic bonds. Forms long straight chains. Those chains themselves are cross linked by hydrogen bonds, and therefore it can form into microfibrils, which give it strong tensile strength, making it an excellent structural carbohydrate. Well, thank you. I hope that's helpful. And if you want to, I've got some footage coming up of some leaf cutter ants. This footage was taken. This footage was taken in Belize on our wonderful, wonderful Belize trip. Personally, I find it quite mesmerising watching these little critters as they go about their business. On this occasion, they found some yellow flowers, and you'll see that they have cut up the yellow petals, and they're taking those yellow petals back to their nests to feed to their fungus.